what tracks are actually involved in postural control? Well, I just talked about one, and that is the ventral corticospinal tract is going to be activated in concert with the lateral corticospinal tract. So the motor cortex says, go pull that lever. Well, the message to pull the lever goes to the lateral corticospinal tract, and the message to the ventral corticospinal tract is some clever way to make sure that when the lever gets pulled, the person doesn't fall back. Um, and the, the ventral corticospinal tract may engage brainstem pathways um, a, a, as well. And so the ventral corticospinal tract is going to end on motor neurons in bo on both sides bilaterally. So lesions here don't have a big effect because if, if this side is lesioned and both sides lose their innervation from this side, they're still innervated from the other side. Okay? So uh, ventral corticospinal tract lesions are, are pretty difficult to, to uh, detect. Um, the, the other pathways are the lateral reticulospinal tract, the medial reticulospinal tract, and the lateral vestibulospinal tract. The, this one, the medial reticulospinal tract, which comes from the pons, depends on input from the forebrain in order to be active. So it's, it's only active when it's getting an input from the forebrain. And the forebrain is normally always saying, be active. And the medial reticulospinal tract is, is mostly concerned with uh, con, uh, exciting flexors, whereas the lateral vestibulospinal tract and the lateral reticulospinal tract excite extensors. Um, and so they're they're in nice they're in a nice balance um, under normal circumstances. Now, if there is a lesion in around the, the junction of the midbrain and the diencephalon, or in the rostral midbrain, or caudal to that, a person can adopt a posture. This is this type of posturing is a fixed. Uh, a fixed position, uh, and it is, it's, it's a sign of some pretty serious damage in the brainstem. And so there are two postures that you have to know. One is the decorticate. The decorticate happens in humans with high midbrain, midbrain diencephalon lesions. And the decorticate posture is the legs are extended and the arms are this. They're flexed with the, with the, um, with the uh, hands adducted in. Okay, so this is the decorticate posture. And if the, le and then, uh, the, if the lesion is farther caudal, uh, the, the posture becomes what's called a decerebrate. And the decerebrate uh, posture is is this. So the l arms are out and supinated. Um, and again, the legs are, are extended. So this is a physiological extensor. This is uh, physiological extensors. Remember, physiological extensors oppose gravity. And so that's an excitation of, of physiological extensors. They're opposing gravity. And these are, these are the extensors. This is a pose. This is the pose that you see in a quadruped. This is the posture that you see in a quadruped is all extensors, limb ex or joint extensors. This decerebrate posture it occurs in quadrupeds and has been studied ever since Charles Sherrington. And so we understand about how this works. And um, uh, it is supported by activity in the LVST, the lateral vestibular spinal tract, and the uh, lateral reticular spinal tract that is going and, and exciting flexors. And th this lateral vestibular spinal tract is really important because what the input to the lateral vestibular spinal tract is the sacculus. And remember that the sacculus is the otoconial organ that is oriented uh, vertically and is sensitive to, to gravity. Okay, so as one is, if a person is falling, the sacculus is excited. It excites the lateral vestibular spinal tract. Oh, I said that completely wrong. This is going to excite extensors. Sorry about that. Um, the lateral vestibular spinal tract is excited, and that uh, gives you this extensor posture. 
the interesting thing is that the it's not the alpha motor neurons to extensors that are excited. It's actually the gamma motor neurons. So this is a gamma motor neuron um, uh, excitation. It's going to the gamma motor neurons, which means that you're getting extensor contraction via the gamma loop. So in other words, the gamma motor neuron uh, contracts the intrafusal fiber, which leads to 1A activation which leads to alpha motor neuron, alpha motor neuron uh, excitation, which leads to contraction. So you're going through the gamma loop to get this contraction. And what's the, what's the, uh, what's the upshot of that? Is that if you cut, if, if the sensory input is cut, then there's no more decerebrate uh, posturing. Okay? So this is dependent on sensory input. Okay, so so that's it for for um for for postural control. Important things to remember. Uh, number one, postural uh, imbalances, postural challenges are dealt with before they wreak havoc. You, a person shouldn't fall. They shouldn't fall while they're standing. They shouldn't fall as they're walking. They should be able to tolerate uh, the, the challenges uh, to posture uh, uh, of normal life. Um, and the second, uh, uh, so, so the, those changes, the anticipatory changes, the changes may be anticipatory, but they also may be uh, after the fact. In any case, they're in time to prevent actual falling in a healthy individual. The other thing to remember is that these postures, these fixed postures, the decorticate and decerebrate postures are signs of damage to specific sites in the brainstem, to the rostral midbrain in the case of decorticate posture and to the caudal midbrain or pons in the case of a decerebrate posture. Okay, so we're gonna now turn our attention for the rest of this series to praxis.